Hello all history hunters. Oh, <laughs> a beautiful day, absolutely beautiful day. And just out on some good land, but I've really hunted it out and just managed to get a signal. There's not many on here. It's a little thimble. I usually say on these things, hard working people. This 10 signal and it's a little button. I think it's on back. Bit of an old plate to secure something but there's no design on it. So yeah. I think this is part of a medieval cooking pot. Got a bit of curvature on it. It's a low number, a six on the equinox. Yeah. On to the next. Bit of a very old teaspoon, is it? On an eight signal. Yeah, not made of sturdy stuff, rotting away quick. Ah, just a quick word, a quick favour if I can. So if, if you like what you're about to see, uh, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic really helps the channel out. Well, back to the finds. It's been a while. Very poor signal. Let's have a look. That's a hammered silver coin. Don't know what it is yet, but it's a 12-13 signal. Oh, bloody marvellous. Is it an Eddie Penny? Right, looks like it could be in fairly good condition. Right, let's have a look. Oh, I am so pleased. Number 56. Fantastic. Well, that was deep. That's how deep the pinpointer is. So that's what 15 inches down. Look at that face looking left. It's me only, only my second short cross detecting in North Lancashire. And there's stars there. So I think that means it's Scottish. I think the Scottish might have, you know, been in control of this area then. So I wonder who that is. But that's got to be pretty old, that. Oh, that's a pal of mine. Let's see, uh, you know, he might, uh, he might be telling me who it is. But look at that. Oh, <laughs> William the Lion. <laughs> William the Lion. 1200s. Oh my gosh. I think William the Lion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. What a coin. So, yeah. What can you say to that? But that is fabulous. William the Lion. Good God. Whoa. Oh, a little old button on the 13 signal. How old that is, I don't know. That looks pretty old. But when it comes on in a 13 and you're uh, uh, William the Lion coin comes in on a 13, 
and you start crossing your fingers, don't you? A deep, very poor signal, uh, but a nice little uh, silver enamelled button. Got some age to it. Didn't think there was going to be anything there, maybe a piece of iron. Just goes to show you. Look at that for a coin. William the Lion. Look at that determined face. I'll be down here with the English. Trying to get into Lancaster Castle. Look at that. What a beauty. <laughs> with the short cross with the stars not the pellets indicating it's Scottish but look at that beauty of a coin <laughs> only my second ever short cross I think it's reasonably reasonably rare for what it is Wow. Well, there we are back at base. And I've been looking up this uh, William the Lion. And what a. Yes, yeah, so much of our history, you, <laughs> you know, you don't kind of know off the top of your head. And when you find something like this and sort of research it, it's, it's it, you know, it's it's incredible. Uh, apparently he wasn't called William the Lion during his lifetime. He got that name uh, after he died because of, um, you know, the flag that he designed with a with a lion on or his mark or, or something. So, yeah, well, he was, he was born sometime around about 1142. They're not quite sure when. But he died on the uh, 4th of December 1214 and he reigned as King of Scotland from 1165 to 1214. For 48 years, the second longest, second longest ever. Uh, so his father was uh, King David I of Scotland. His parents were the uh, King's son Henry and Ada de Warren. <laughs> So that's the thing with all these knights and kings. Uh, back at the back in the day, they had kind of French Frenchish names, didn't they? Uh, so William was around ten when his father died in eleven fifty two, and his older brother Malcolm was uh, made king, um, and he inherited the earldom of Northumbria, which turned out to be important during his life. Um, so yeah, so David the first died the next year and William became a uh, presumptive to the new King Malcolm the fourth. In 1157, William lost the earldom of Northumbria to Henry the second of England. So Henry the second, you know, booted him out of Northumbria and he never forgot that and always tried getting it back. So yeah, <laughs> it's just... Imagine you're that part of the country. We're Scottish. Uh, no, no, Henry's been up. We're English now. Oh, oh okay, jolly chaps. Oh, uh, nice to see you all. Uh, no, no, uh, William's come back down. We're Scottish again. Well, hi, well, well, hi, then. I mean, the ordinary people wouldn't know whether they were coming or going, would they? Who's in charge? Yeah. Same one as last time. Uh, Malcolm, his older brother, didn't live long. Uh, died at 9th of December, 1165, at age 24. So William became king. 
uh, on the 24th. He was crowned on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, 1165. So his brother was religious and frail, but he was powerfully built, redhead and headstrong. Um, yeah, was he kept trying to get back Northumbria apparently over his life. Uh, when he was came to the throne, he had to spend some time down with Henry the uh, Second, just to show that he wasn't uh, up to no good. Um, so, but then he he kind of fell out with him and trooped off back north, and he arranged the first definite treaty in eleven sixty eight between France and Scotland. You know, trying to make a. Uh, you know, the enemy of my enemy, England. Uh, but of course, France was in bits then, part owned by Henry the Second. So yeah, the the borders were not the same as they are now in any way, shape or form. The kings of England were often kings of part of France and spent time there and maybe loved it better, who knows? Uh yeah, so there was a, a revolt against Henry II by his, some of his sons in 1173-74 to 74, and William sided with the sons and they got a bit of assistance from Louis VII of France but then that fell apart. Uh, 1174, the Battle of Alnwick. Uh, so during a raid in support of that, William... He recklessly charged the English tro troops himself, shouting, Now we shall see which of us are good knights. Or in Gallic or whatever he was speaking at the time, who knows. Uh, and he, f he came off his horse and was trapped under his horse. And Henry's troops, led by Ranulf de Glanville, took him in chains to Newcastle, then Northampton. Uh, and then he was transferred to Falais, you know, Falais in Normandy. Told you about the French. Uh, Henry then sent an army to Scotland and occupied it. You're all English now. Uh, as ransom and to regain his kingdom, William had to acknowledge Henry as his feudal superior and agree to pay for the cost of the English army's occupation of Scotland by taxing the Scots. 40,000 Scottish marks. Uh, the church in Scotland was also subjected to that of England. William acknowledged this by signing the Treaty of Falais and was then allowed to return to Scotland. In 1175, he swore fealty to Henry II at York Castle. Uh, the, the treaty of that treaty triggered a revolt in Galway which lasted until 1186. So they were like, nope, we're not part of Scotland now, or we're Scotland, you're not Scotland, or who knows what they were calling themselves up there. Uh, and then they were all building castles. Uh, Dumfries, Bewley, Cromarty. Uh, so it was a bit of a castle building uh, exercise. And uh, yeah, they were trying to keep out the Norse Earls of Orkney from expanding beyond Caithness. So, yeah, so William had trouble with other parts of Scotland. Uh, he then fell out with Pope Alexander III uh, over who was going to be bishops in Scotland. So it gets all power games in, in Europe. The kings, knights, uh, the popes. Uh, was it... After the death of was it who's this uh the death of alexander in 1181 his successor lucius the third so this is popes consented to a compromise and they all agreed to play nice so in 1188 william secured a papal bull which declared the church of scotland was now directly subject only to rome thus rejecting the claims of supremacy put forward by english archbishops uh, then that Treaty of Falais remained in force for the next 15 years but then uh, Richard the Lionheart he needed money for the Third Crusade and he agreed to terminate it in exchange for 10,000 silver marks 
On the 15th of December, 1189, William then was able to address the turbulent chiefs in his outlying parts of his kingdom. His authority was recognised in Galway. Uh, yeah, he tried to buy back Northumbria. He still wanted Northumbria. So, yeah, I want that Northumbria uh, from Richard I in 1194. But he said, he said no, <laughs> you're not having it. Uh, then uh, King John came along and they had a bit of a scrap. So it's all really quite interesting stuff. Uh, he lost to King John. So King John, he, you know, he was getting on a bit. So King John took his two eldest daughters back as hostages and was going to marry his kids. So you can kind of see, you know, how... Uh, you know, England, Scotland kind of came about, merged. It's, yeah, all these different nights, backwards and forwards between lands on England, uh, France, Scotland. Uh, so John beat him, beat him back. And his daughters were even mentioned in uh, the Magna Carta about, you know, not holding him as ransom anymore. So, yeah. In incredible find.